All right, guys, we came out on scout today, and uh, we're on about in the middle of the wildlife area. I just wanted to kind of take a day in the woods to do some scouting, and I uh, thought I'd bring my little trusty flintlock with me in case I saw a squirrel. Walking down an old logging trail over here, and I heard some disturbance. I stopped for a few minutes. I look over, and I see this tree, just this gray squirrel, just a barking. We hemmed him right up, popped him with the old muzzleloader. Now I thought I'd show you what it takes to reload this thing because now it's empty. I've pushed the pan forward. I've wiped the pan out with my hunting shirt. Now I've got a copper measure here. And I'm going to go ahead and load that measure about three quarters of the way up of powder. I use about three quarters of a measure of powder, which is about 60 grains to about a full measure of shot and in my mind for a self-reliant situation longer term I think I would just as soon carry shot as carry round ball and I'd carry a mold to make the round ball because it's easier to just take a lead shot and make round ball out of it in a mold melt it down in a ladle and make a round ball than it's ever going to be to make shot. Now I'll just take a wad of sheep's wool, shove it down on top of my powder charge, take my wiping stick or my ramrod as it's known, push that all the way to the bottom, tamp it down. This can be done a little faster if you're not talking while you're doing it, but you don't have to be in a big hurry. It's not like you're shooting at somebody or somebody shooting at you. You're hunting. And I'll take my shot bag, and it's just a deerskin bag with a horn lid on it. And I'll fill my shot measure up at that point. And this is a mixture in this shot bag. It's basically part six shot and part eight shot. So it's a little bit of both. So it's a very versatile hunting load. Remember, there's no powder or anything in the pan of this gun and it's on half cock so it's not going off or going anywhere or anything like that tuck that sheep's wool back in the bag I've got a bag that I keep my sheep's wool in and I just want enough of it to give myself a good wad sometimes I can pull it out when it's in the bag and sometimes I can't depends on where I'm at on the sheep's wool as far as my shot bag goes this is all pretty simple stuff and I'll shove a wad over top of everything just to secure it. The same thing, sheep's wool. I find it to be very fiery retardant. It's got lanolin in it, so it lubricates that bore a little bit on the way down as well and on the way out. It doesn't come out in a big ball of fire. Once I get that done, I've basically made my shotgun shell. Now I will take, sometimes I just prime my pan with my horn. Sometimes I use another horn that's got a finer powder in it. This is 4F powder in this horn. And I'm just going to fill the slot in that pan. Tap it around a little bit so all of it's in that well. Close my frizzing. And now I'm ready to go. So we'll get back on the trail and do some more scouting. Maybe we'll get another squirrel. There's a nest right there, boys, but I had a squirrel run across the trail a minute ago, but I haven't seen him move. He must have got the backside of a tree somewhere, and now I don't see him. So we'll just sit and wait for a few minutes, see what happens.
That deer was probably no more than 20 yards, maybe 15 actually, right down over a rise. Two weeks from now, muzzleloader season, she would have been toast. Not hard to get close to animals. I walked up on that one. It bounded off a couple leaps. I stopped, ducked down, stayed there for 10 minutes and it came right back. It was on a mission going somewhere. I just disturbed it for a second. So I filmed her for a few minutes. Now if I spook her off, I don't care. But I just wanted you guys to kind of get a close look at that because, you know, I'm sweating. I've been walking down from back in the back. And, you know, I'm not trying to cover my scent. I'm not wearing camouflage. It's not hard to get close to animals as long as you're quiet and you don't move. Okay, guys, pretty funny. I come back in here to camp. I was going to show you guys real quick how to clean this squirrel and check to make sure the meat was good. I had a couple questions about that on the last video. And I spooked nine turkey right out of my camp over here. They must have been in here after something. I don't know what, but hope they're still here in a few weeks when turkey season opens up. So, to the task. Real simple. Just a couple of uh, baton moves here. Tail. Didn't quite get it off. All four legs. Real simple. Right at the, right the joint. Take the head off real quick. Same deal, just baton through it. Just like that. One cut on the back, just lift the skin up a little bit. Make one cut across the back, just like that. Till you expose underneath the skin. Set your knife down out of the way and just pull the pants off of him, just like that. Pull the shirt off of him the same way. Just get your thumb underneath the skin and yank. Just like that. Take your knife and open him up. Right at the rib cage, don't go too deep. Just a good thin slice is what you want. You want a good sharp knife for this. This guy's a little bit cold, not that big a deal. We're going to come down, this is a boy squirrel. So we're just going to cut straight down between everything. Open him up right here. Cut down and split the pelvis just like that. Reach up inside the split slit that we just made. Pull the guts out. Nice and clean just like that. Reach up inside, get the liver and the or the lungs and the heart. Pull them out. The esophagus will probably come with it. Not a big deal. Just take a look at these parts, look at the heart, make sure there's no white spots on it or anything like that. Look at the liver, make sure it doesn't have any white spots on it of any kind. Make sure there's no worms in here of any kind in the, in the intestinal tract or showing in the gut cavity. Make sure there's no worms on the inside. Cut all the unnecessary stuff off and pull it out. Real simple, guys. Nothing to it. And you're done. Now, again, with the squirrel, you know, shot with a flintlock. I'm not uh, feeling any shot here. I know he was shot in the head. I saw that. Looks like he got hit right here in the lung. I can feel maybe a pellet right there. Yep, I feel a pellet right there. And you can see there's a dark spot right there. Just cut right on top of it and push it out. It'll come right out of there. There it is right there. Piece of six shot. And that's pretty much all there is to it. 
As long as you don't have any more shot in there, you're good to go. We got a dark spot on the shoulder right there. We can see if that's a piece of shot. It could be. All we gotta do is cut into the meat a little bit and we'll know. If there's shot in there, it'll pop right out. If there's not shot in there, it won't come out, and you'll be you'll know there wasn't anything there. Okay. Rinse him off. Ready to cook. <coughs> okay, folks, I appreciate you joining me for this quick video today. Just went out and did a little bit of a scout. Got real close to one deer, shot the squirrel, came back, cleaned it. I want to talk to you a little bit about how to identify the good meat. Bear in mind that squirrel's been dead a couple hours. 65 degrees here in Ohio, not a big deal at all. Three or four hours wouldn't even be a big deal to me. If it was below 50 degrees, I wouldn't even worry about it. I'd get to it when I did, but I'm not going to cut the guts out of it while I'm out in the field. It's not necessary. Thank you for your views. Thank you for your support. Thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, my instructors, affiliates, sponsors, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.